Should I disinfect as a professional house cleaner? That is a great question. We'll talk about that today. Hi there, I'm Angela Brown, and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question, and I get to help you find an answer. Now, today's show is brought to us by House Call Pro, which is the number one service software for service professionals. It's great for tree cutters and landscapers and house cleaners and professional organizers, also people that do painting and pressure washing and all kinds of things. It's an awesome app that keeps track of all of your clients, all of your jobs, all of the information about the job, the details of the payments of the job, and one-click credit card processing. They're doing a demo right now free for me and my friends over at housecallpro.com forward slash Angela. And they'll walk you through the deal to see if it's right for your company. And they'll show you how it works and how to save some time and money. All right. If you have any questions, please go to housecallpro.com forward slash Angela. All right. On to today's show, we got a call from a house cleaner who asked this question. Lorraine Brock here. Angela, just love again the way you teach. I've been watching you for about a month and just an awesome teacher. Uh, you explain things so well and I, I do appreciate all your YouTube videos. My question today is about disinfectant. I did see that you did a segment on the coronavirus and I do know that there's a lot of cleaning companies out there right now that are offering disinfecting pa packages. Tell me about products to use that disinfect versus some of the natural ones that may not do the 99.99% of the germs and viruses. Do you always keep a disinfecting all-purpose disinfector in their cleaning caddy? That could mean for toilet handles, door handles, but I'm interested really in the disinfectant side of it. Uh, that would be for all-purpose or for most surfaces. Um, I think it's really important, and I think it's going to be a high level of people that really want their home disinfected uh, now that this virus is going around and even for a long period afterwards. And I know some some cleanings uh, agents are not disinfectant. So please explain that and what products you would recommend. Thank you. All righty, Lorraine. Thank you so much for calling in. That's a great series of questions. And let me back up just a step, and then I'll try to cover them all. Okay, so going back after the stay-at-home uh, encouragement from our leaders, when you go back into the marketplace and you start working again, every contact that you have with your customer is going to require a new conversation. The world has changed. Expectations have changed. Everyone everywhere now is aware of personal protective equipment and disinfecting and sanitizing. So this is not something you can just wing your way through. You need to be very well educated and very informed. Now, the good news is lots of house cleaners have been using this time to become trained and certified in COVID special training for disinfecting. There's lots of it on the internet. There are lots of different programs from industry experts that I recommend you check out. I will leave links in the show notes to those. All right, that said, when you go back on a walkthrough with your customer, there's going to need to be a conversation. And the conversation will be, do we need to disinfect their home? Now, the reason I, I say that is because lots of house cleaners just assume they're going to be going back and they're going to be bringing fogging machines and they're going to be wearing hazmat suits and they're going to be looking like one of the Ghostbusters. But the reality is this. Many homes did not change. Many homes never had the COVID-19 virus or the coronavirus. And so to go into their home and to be like fogging everything and disinfecting everything is probably overkill. Most of the cleaning we do is cleaning and sanitizing. And sanitizing cleans everything to 99.9% .9 of bacteria, which is good enough for most homes. And so the conversation is going to be, do we need to disinfect your home? If you came to my home right now, there's nobody that's been here that's been infected with a virus. Everyone in my home is healthy. My house is clean. That would be really overkill for my home. And it's going to be overkill for lots of people's homes. So if you just assume nobody's cleaned their house in the month and a half we've been out, that might be erroneous. They might be cleaning every single day. So you may not need a deep clean going in and you may not need to disinfect. All right, that said, there are products that I keep with me in my cleaning caddy at all time that disinfect. Now, one of them that I recommend is the Lysol product that is on the list N for EPA in the United States. And every country has its own list that's like the EPA list. So this will disinfect and you can search for disinfectant products that are listed to kill the coronavirus. Now, the reason that I have this in my cleaning caddy, why? Because when you go into a home, even if there's no need to disinfect, there may be scenarios in which you need to disinfect certain areas. 
And that would be if there's OPIM, which stands for other people's infectious materials. So if you go into a house and somebody's been puking or there's blood or there's urine or something like that, you're going to have to clean that up and disinfect that area. Now, the disinfecting rules that we've been watching on the news say that you have to clean first. So you're going to use your regular cleaning first, then you're going to disinfect. The scary thing is if you look at the list and for the EPA, lots of the contact time for sitting and dwelling on a surface is like two to 10 minutes. So if you start spraying chemicals and you leave them there for 10 minutes, that will disinfect. But most of the time, disinfectant is used for like hospital rooms. And most people don't need hospital room quality in their homes. They just don't. I'm not, I'm not knocking those who do, but I'm saying for the majority of people, not necessary, right? That said, there are some natural products on the market, but they all come with a clause. All right, you asked about some natural products. Vinegar is a natural product. That said, it is 2.5 on the pH scale, which means it's very acidic and not safe for most surfaces. Another thing that you asked about uh, natural products is lemons. You can clean with lemons, but these are a two on the pH scale. So this is very, very acidic and again, not safe for most surfaces. There's a product, hydrogen peroxide. The hydrogen peroxide, if you go to the list in, you can look it up and it needs to sit for five minutes before it will kill the bacteria and it's not listed for the coronavirus. Also is uh, rubbing alcohol, the isopropyl alcohol at 70%. The reason I bring this up is because this is what you would use on granite countertops where nothing else on the market, it seems, is great for porous surfaces. And a porous surface has the little cracks and fissures in it like granite and marble. And so if you have granite and marble, the only way you're going to be able to disinfect that is if you are able to put it inside a spray bottle and spray it on. Now, uh, the 70% is already diluted. And so you don't want to dilute it anymore because if you dilute it, then it loses its effectiveness. And so first and foremost, you have to make sure that the surfaces are sealed. If they're not sealed, you can't use it. And so that's catch number one. So if you'll beat up a little bit of water on the surface and leave it for about five minutes, if it sinks in, it's not sealed and it needs to be sealed. If it stays on top of the surface, then your granite or your stone or your marble is sealed. Then you can go ahead and spray the alcohol on it and leave it for five minutes. Now you can leave it for five minutes and that will kill 99.9% .9 of the bacteria, but it is not designed for the coronavirus. So there are, there are several products that are on the market, but not safe for all surfaces. So what I recommend is that you check the pH level on all of the cleaning chemicals that you use. And more than ever, and this is where it really becomes important that house cleaners know your chemical safety issues, okay? You, you gotta know your stuff. You gotta know the pH. You gotta know what surfaces you can use your cleaning chemicals on what. Uh, somebody asked me the other day, can I just spray bleach on everything and leave it for 10 minutes? Ah, no, please don't. Um, no offense against bleach. It has its purposes. But if you spray bleach on anything and leave it for 10 minutes, it could have some very serious effects, including ruining or damaging the surface. You just can't spray it on everything, right? So there are reasons to sanitize and there are reasons to disinfect. But what I recommend is that you have a conversation with the customer about what they prefer and then act accordingly because not all homes need to be disinfected and 99.9% .9 in the sanitization process is good enough for most homes. All right, that's my two cents. I hope that helps a little bit. If it does, please pass this on to a friend. If we've earned your subscription, please subscribe. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.